from the Wayne County Courthouse in Goldsboro, North Carolina. Wayne Goldsboro Television brings you the meeting of the Wayne County Board of Commissioners. Please stand by for the Wayne County Board of Commissioners meeting. And everybody is here this morning. And uh, we get started. Good morning. It gives me great pleasure this morning to introduce Terry Johnson. Terry is the um, general manager and chairman of our local gospel TV 43 and also Free Life Ministries. So, Terry, please come here. Thank you. Thank you so much, guys. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day. Uh, this is the day that the Lord hath made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. Father, we thank you for this assembly, uh, this group of men and women come together to take care of the business of our great county. And Father, we thank you today that uh, whatever comes um, our way, we know that it's already passed through you. Father, we also look to you for the great men and women who serve uh, this, uh, this county, uh, not only the first responders, uh, those men and women who go out and protect on a day-to-day -day basis, but those men and women of Seymour Johnson Air Force Base, and for those that work tirelessly every single day to keep this county moving forward. Father, I pray that we will be your hands and feet to this community, hands and feet of this community to those that are in need. And we ask this in the precious name of Christ. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I hope that everybody's had an opportunity to read the minutes or the uh, any corrections that need to be made in the minutes. Hearing none, is there a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. Got a motion on the floor. Any discussion? All right. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Agenda, I'm excuse me, the minutes are passed. Just the agenda, Mr. Wood. Uh, Mr. Chairman, we've got one uh, item, and that is under new business, uh, we'd like to uh, delete item number five for further study by the county attorney. Okay. Are there any other adjustments? No. Hearing none, all those in favor of the agenda as it is, please raise your right hand. The agenda has been accepted. Let's move to our special recognition. And, uh, Sheriff, are you going to do that? Good morning, thank you. I'll ask uh, Major Tom Effler to come up and be with me. Uh, Major Effler has been with the Sheriff's Office now for 34 years and has served under three different sheriffs. And uh, he's retiring today, and, uh, or as of yesterday, and we thank him for, <laughs> thank him for his service tremendously. Uh, the plaque presented to Tom Effler, Sheriff's Office, in appreciation of dedicated service as a county employee, January 15, 1983, July 31, 2017. How are you? Congratulations, sir. And also, uh, the weapon that uh, Major Effler carried to protect the citizens of Wayne County, his sidearm. We'd like to present that to him also at this time. Major Effler. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, gentlemen. Y'all won't do it. And before you leave, we, we we'd like to get, to one, after you do that, can we get picture? Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Sheriff, you've got a lot of folks that are retired out of there. I mean, you're not going to have any, anybody. They're all old. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Tom? <laughs> in, in a minute, i got to read this. Yeah, I stopped by the sheriff's office the other day and to talk with the sheriff. I, I ran into Tom, but he was smiling. He could be paid the number of days, hours, and minutes <laughs> that he was leaving. But what we want, we will put this in uh, 
it's a little bit better at this before we give it to you, but I'm going to read this. It's, whereas Major Tom Epler retired from County Wayne effective July 31, 2017, and whereas Steve Mazzino has been – Steve Mazzino, you need to change this character. <laughs> we'll substitute your name there. Has been employed at the Wayne County Sheriff's Office since July 15, 1983. Whereas he, throughout the years he earned the admiration, respect, and friendship of those whom he worked and came in contact. Now, therefore, be resolved that the Wayne County Board of Commissioners, in accordance to North Carolina General Statute 28187.2, hereby awards retired Major Tom Epper his service weapon in exchange for consideration of $1 and awards him his badge. Now, therefore, be it resolved further that the Wayne County Board of Commissioners extends best wishes for many years of good health. And happens to Tom Epler during his retirement and his future endeavors. Adopt this first day of August 2017. Thanks, sir. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Section. So the public comments is open. You give us your name, your address, and your phone number. Any comments this morning? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, my name is Barry Merrill. I live at 432 Club Knowles Road in Dudley. <coughs> And my phone number is 919-922-1499. Um, and I've practiced this, and I'm trying to get it down to three minutes. I think I'm pretty close, so uh, if you'll be a little patient with me, excuse me. Uh, here we go. Uh, Commissioner Pate, County Commissioners, and Mr. Wood, last Tuesday, the men and women of the Wayne County Board of Education, your partners in service, to the good people of Wayne, took some uh, first steps towards redistricting our schools. I believe these polit uh, this political courage that they, they showed is deserving of our praise. 25 years ago, the men and women who sat in your seats showed the political courage to merge Goldsboro City Schools with Wayne County Schools. We didn't show the political courage to redistrict. We all suffered. School Board Chairman Arnold Flowers said something very scary, but I think very sage, last Tuesday. As an old uh, timber man and a politician in this county, he said on the redistricting issue, we probably are going to start a fire that we can't put out. 
the reason all of us know, um, excuse me, the reason, as all of us know, that the good people of this board and the school board haven't addressed the issue of redistricting to the detriment of the county is because of that fire. We all know it needs to be done, but we all are afraid of that fire. There's a vital part of this issue on my heart that uh, can help us, I believe, follow through and do the right thing. Wayne County Schools replaced the old Belfast, Pikeville, Nahuna, and Eureka schools, as some of you remember up there, uh, with Northeast and Northwest uh, 20 years ago. They asked the parents to give up their old school that they loved and, and replaced it with a new elementary school. Uh, are we now talking, uh, are, are we now telling the schools to go back and open and uh, open old school buildings and classrooms that are vacant and in many cases needed to be replaced and, uh, and force parents to pull their students out of the beautiful schools that, that they're going to now and, and force them to go uh, put their kids in those schools? Um, are we, get, are we uh, effectively telling those parents to put their uh, uh, to, to pull out their students and go to private or charter schools. This is not a K-3 classroom problem. This is a problem that goes back 25 years and 50 years. And we're, uh, we've been kicking this can down the road for 50 years. To solve the problem, we don't need an easy, quick decision that, that continues to kick the can down the road. Can't we learn? We've got new state money coming and a bond issue to help us finance and to look beyond the immediate. We can, we can build some new schools in this county. Uh, can't we ask the county manager to develop, help us develop a five-year facility plan so that when we're asking parents to accept uh, going back in the district where they maybe should have been in, that we give them a nice new school as, as kind of some sugar, if you will, on, on that. And I ask you gentlemen to, to consider that and uh, uh, be men of vision. Uh, Mr. Wood can work this out for all of us. Thank you. Thanks, sir. <clears throat> Are there any other comments this morning? Hearing none, public comments. Yes. My name is Deborah Higgins. I live at 277 South US 13 Highway in Dudley. I'm here uh, about Busco Beach. Can you give a phone number, please? 919 583 3615. And if you don't mind, I would like to give um, Miss Stanley, and I have been um, concerned about Busco uh, Beach. We've been up here for 20 years, um, and it seems to get worse by the minute. The, um, July 5th, the newspaper did an article about the city rules and Busco Beach and the city of Goldsboro making the rules up and not being able to enforce the rules that they make up, which I do not understand. Um, on the letter from Mr. Barfield, I just want to point out a few things. Um, in the first paragraph, he says about the hours of the park that his employees were not informed about the hours. I lived out there for 20 years, and there has been signs saying what the hours are when you enter the park. He's saying now that there are signs inside the park, but there is no sign 
when you enter the park saying that you cannot ride four-wheelers from um, 11 p.m. to 8 in the morning. Um, the other issue at the bottom of the first paragraph is the city trying to turn it over to the county with the ETJ. Please do not let them do this. It's going to take both facilities to straighten this out. In the first paragraph, the second paragraph, the first part of it, about city and county owned FEMA land, letting them use it. You know, um, in the FEMA land requirements, there's you can use the FEMA land for recreation, but not if you're making money off the four wheelers riding on FEMA land. And they've fenced it in, they're parking on it, they're making, you know, probably every camper and charging the ATVs, the people that go into the park, $100 per camper. Um, they're making money. These are educated, these people have money that go into Busco. They're educated people. They're also party people. They are not spending money in Wayne County. They do not go past Burger King. They, you know, they're drinkers. I mean, um, they might stop at Walmart on the way in, but that's about it. Um, you know, I just don't see them spending a whole lot of money in Wayne County. They, they stay in the park and, um, the flood, Matthew was a disaster. Uh, people were coming in there, the water was coming up, and we called to make sure that somebody went down there to tell the people that they needed to get out before they couldn't get out. And that's exactly what happened. A lot of, lot of property destroyed. Um, they don't have an evacuation plan. We have property at Ocracoke. You can only put so many people on that island. You have to have an evacuation plan. You have to be able to say that all these people can get off this island if, if a disaster happens. Busco Beach is also an island. There's one bridge going on and off it. Um, you know, something bad is going to happen there. Um, okay. My name is Rachel Siobhan Stanley. I live at 916 Bryan Boulevard. Uh, and my phone number is, I've given it to him. That's enough. Uh, I'm still having problems with Bosco. Like to report that Mr. Hill and his group got a bunch of, gave out a bunch of DWIs according to the deputy sure. So y'all can be pleased. The county's making money from Bosco. Okay, uh, but what Miss Higgins said is true. They can't get those people out of there. This uh, when the uh, people went in uh, this last event. Thank God we had one man, a deputy sheriff, Mr. Powers, who did call and did work with me to give me where I could get back to the forge to the cemetery, which I didn't need, but at least it gave me his phone number. And so I was able to work, but I did let my community service worker leave early because I didn't know what was going to happen after 2 o'clock. Uh, they gave out a bunch of DWIs. Uh, they were running after the time. I did call Miss Pierce like she asked me. And she assured me that she would stop the four wheelers from running in front of my house. This is at midnight when she called me back. The four wheelers continued to run. So after a while, I'm getting tired. I'd like to get some sleep. So I called the sheriff's department. And at 3 o'clock, I had three sheriff's cars sitting in my driveway. They can verify that the four wheels were running at three o'clock in the morning, okay? I asked them to please send somebody down to Bosco to ask them to get somebody up there to stop them from running those four wheels. 
to make a long story short, when the deputy sheriff called down to Bosco, he turned to me and said, Miss Stanley, they can't send us no help. They got a bunch of drunks down there, and they're fighting, and they're trying to control the area down there, so they couldn't send me no help. So you figured the story out. Uh, we need to get this mess settled. Uh, and it, you do not need to, we don't need to continue. I've been going on with this thing, and they've been notified numerous times about the hours. I personally have gone down there. So Mr. Pierce's thing that he said in the paper, it's in black and white that he couldn't enforce it. I was down there at 12 o'clock. If you'd have been down there, you could have seen the four wheels just going all over the place. Miss Pierce came out and wanted to talk to me. I didn't get out of my truck. She wanted to argue, and Mr. Powers will tell you, Mr. Bell Powers, I told her I'm not gonna argue and fuss with you. And he asked her to please be quiet, and she kept yakking. Uh, I don't know if that's the proper word, but that's what I, you understand, I believe. So to make a long story short, Mr. Powell, she got mad and took off. And he sat there and he stood there and talked to me. He said, I'll try to get some help. That was at 12 o'clock. Now, 3 o'clock is when the sheriff was in my yard, uh, yard trying to get the people. That's when all the drugs were down there fighting. I hear some other things were going on, which I will not bring out in the public. But I think y'all gonna get some money because I believe that the sheriff's department has taken care of some problems that I'm not gonna discuss over the weekend. You might want to look into what's going on in Bosco other than ATV running. Thank you, Ms. Stanley. Thank you. Are there any other comments this morning? The comment period is closed. Let's move on. Mr. Wood, I think we got Mr. Wade. Yes. Give us a, oh, there he a is. Pump. Pump. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for you coming up. I skipped the appointment. Pump committee. I'm sorry. Yes, Mr. Chair. Appoint to me to meet this morning. We'd like to recommend the uh, reappointment of Miss Barbara Acock to the Wayne County Jury Commission. I'd like to put this in form of motion. Motion on four. Any discussion? All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Thank you. We'd like to recommend the reappointment of Jimmy Wise to the Eureka Planning Commission. I'll put this form of a motion. Have a motion on the floor. Is there any discussion? All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Thank you. I'd like to recommend the appointment of Peggy Tate to the Wayne County Council on Aging. I'd like to put this form of a motion. Another motion on the floor. Is there any discussion on that motion? All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Thank you. We'd like to recommend the appointment of Joe Scott to the Eastern Carolina RPO as a TAC member. Can I put this form of motion? Have a motion on the floor. Is there any discussion? All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Thank you. would like to recommend the appointment of Barbara Kanigi to the Eastern Carolina RPO as a TAC member alternate. Motion on the floor. Any discussion? All those in favor, please raise your right hand. I'd like to recommend the appointment of Mike Bass to the Eastern Carolina RPO as a TCC member. I'll put this form of motion there. Another motion on the floor. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Yes, sir. Let me ask on that again. Uh, that's, who was that again? Mike Bass. He and he is, is? The airport manager. Okay. Maintenance manager. All right. It's, is he replacing Wayne? Are you still on that? Yes, this is a TCC. Yeah. Okay, yeah. TCC. All right. Yeah, yeah there's right. still right. okay. All those in favor? Just raise your right hand. And last, the appointment committee uh, met and discussed this morning. I'd like to recommend the dissolution of the detention center committee, and I put this form of motion. Motion on the floor. Any discussion? Is that one that just never met, sir? Well, we met, and the detention center has been fulfilled. Oh, that's true. That's true. Well, it wouldn't be anything. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Thank you. That concludes. Okay, thank you. Mr. Wade, you'll come on up, sir. Mr. Wade is our, our director of our Maxwell Center, and he's going to give us an update. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. 
Good morning. I hope you've been riding busy. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of good stuff going on. Good stuff going on. The uh, building itself is coming along. The uh, Thank you. This week they turned on the electrical systems and um, they are getting ready to turn on the HVAC system uh, to check it. And if it works, they will be turning on conditioning for the air over in the administrative wing so that they can start doing the finishes on the walls and putting in the roof and all that good stuff. Uh, according to TA Loving and David Lewis, uh, as of today, we are 68% finished. Um, so they are coming along very well. They are on schedule, maybe even slightly ahead of schedule, which will be nice because we'll be able to get into the building and move in all of the tables and the chairs and the things that we need to move into the building uh, before we actually start having our events. So right now everything is looking good and uh, we hope that that stays. Um, what I've given you today, there are a few things that I just wanted to talk about. When I first came we had some conversations about the name of the facility. Uh, the Maxwell Regional Agricultural and Convention Center is a mouthful. And from the first day that I got here, the challenge that I had with it is there were folks who were saying things like, oh, you're the guy with the new event center. You're the guy with the new ag center. You're the guy with the new convention center. And they don't use the name because it was so long. So we decided that we wanted to make sure that we control the branding of the building. And in order to do that, we put together a committee of folks from the city and the county and the public on uh, talking about where we needed to go logo wise and tagline wise and so we do have a new logo the next slide is the Maxwell Center logo and so we are asking that everyone all of the media uh, and the public and everyone with the city and county please refer to the building as the Maxwell Center uh, we have had meetings with the Maxwell family to make sure that they were okay with this and they are very okay with this and so from this point forward when we refer to it uh, in branding and things it will be the Maxwell Center and our tagline is take it to the max and so that is the line that we will use in advertising and in trying to bring different groups and associations and folks here to have the meetings um, we'll tell them you know, take it to the max bring it to the Maxwell Center in Goldsboro North Carolina um, and so that's action item one here on my list action item two is our main my marquee sign design and um, the architects originally did the <coughs> drawing that is at the bottom of the page and um, they gave us some options that ranged from a little over 70,000 up to 163,000 and basically we looked at it and thought that it was just a little bit too plain and we didn't like the way the letters were on the bottom when people drive by you only have a couple seconds for them to read things and we don't want them trying to figure out what that says so we asked them to do away with the letters and to shorten it and make it match the building more. If you've driven by the building, uh, there are green glass, uh, there's green glass on the building and there's an angle on the front of the building. So we wanted the sign to look more like the building and they have sent us a new, new slide. Um, they did a new drawing for us and this is what the sign will look like. And so we're asking for the okay on that. Item uh, number three is um, in the back of the building, on this next slide you can see where the purple circle is there I have circled a green dot uh, that green dot is right in the middle of an area that's all brick pavers uh, out in the courtyard and our challenge that I see is you've asked me to use the building as many ways as we can and one of the ways that we'll use that building is to have outdoor events on that courtyard area so it might be a reception it might be a wedding reception it might be a uh, cookout, whatever. And right now there is a landscaping area right dead center. And so I'm asking that we take out the landscaping, replace it with pavers, and have some movable uh, planters that we can still get some greenery, some flowers, but it'll make the area a whole lot more flexible so that we can use it for different things. Um, we're also asking that we be allowed to move forward on uh, going with approved caterers guidelines as you know the building does not have a full kitchen we won't have a chef in the building so when events come into the building they will have a caterer uh, who does their food and so what we're looking at doing is taking the route of doing an approved caterers list 
so that caterers will apply uh, once they're accepted to the list and they give us their um, um, the information that we need from them, their business license, health certificate, some references, that sort of thing, they will be added to the list that folks can use. And lastly, <coughs> excuse me, for the actual venue operations, um, we are asking for our sales and marketing director position to be approved so that we can go ahead and get that position and uh, move forward with starting to book the building, hopefully near the end of September, um, so that we can get some things on the books. Um, so at this point, uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Otherwise, I would ask that we approve action items one through five. <coughs> Mr. Chairman. Yes. I move that we uh, accept and approve action items one through five. We have a motion on the floor. Is there any more discussion? Or is there any discussion? One question. Yes, sir. An example of some of the uh, potential folk will be coming there and what size groups are you expecting? Up to what? I mean, well, I think average? once once we get everything uh, laid out and figured out, I mean, it sort of depends on what the group is doing. Because if the group is coming for a banquet, then you have, of course, the round banquet tables and the chairs. So the, the biggest room will hold so many people. So we're looking at around 800 people max, uh, give or take. But if you're doing an event where it's theater seating, just rows of chairs, then you're going to be able to fit in a whole lot more people. So it sort of depends on what the group's coming in to do as to how many people you can, you can actually hold. So if it's a dinner or something, the number may be smaller, whereas if it's a conference or something where it's mostly theater seating, people listening to a speaker, or watching entertainment, uh, just in rows of seats, then your number's gonna go on up and you may be able to get, you know, 14, 1,500 people in there. So, thank you. Any more discussion? Hey, Mr. Chairman, I, I would like to make a comment in regards to the logo. Man, great job. I understand that we did that locally. Yes, uh, that, uh, that logo, we had some folks in-house work on it, and the one that we ended up going with was done by Jose Perez, who is in our IT department. Um, just started a few months ago. So the logo and the tagline, I think, really just hits home. Yep. Great Thank job. Thank you. One question, and I think you answered it the other day, and I can't remember what you said. The sign out front, it's just going to be, you just say the Maxwell Center is living. Um, can you run back a couple slides? Yeah. Uh, right there. Yeah. Actually, where it says the Maxwell Center on that, that is actually uh, a marquee signage on both sides, and so that will rotate. That is a video board. Okay, I want to make sure. Uh, it's well. approximately the video board itself is approximately ten feet wide. You and want so your at times it will have the logo, but then it'll also have you know come see the home show, come see the whatever, and mm -hmm. it'll advertise the different shows going on. And this is a digital sign. It can uh, it can even do videos on here. So it, I mean, it's a quality sign. Well, I thought that's what you told me about when you just look at it like that. Yeah. It's really good. We just stuck the logo on it, yeah. so it would have yeah. something. Mr. Payton. Yes, sir. We well, go ahead. If you well, know I was going to ask another a question. This is not part of those. On the inside, we've got the, the TV panels that we're talking mm -hmm. about. Noah. Are you favoring the, the larger ones or the smaller ones? Or I am. I, I think that that's going Which to be more? a showpiece. <laughs> And I think if you're if you're yeah. going to have a showpiece, you need to go show it. I mean, are you recommending the, the full room panels or the left side panels? Well, what sure. we want to do there is take that back through our committee yeah. uh, on the agricultural <coughs> committee, and then have a recommendation to you at the next meeting. Yeah, okay. I kind of like those guys to take a look at this. Yeah, thing. I yeah. really would. Yeah. Okay. That's just uh, that's your question. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Uh, as uh, Commissioner Darty said, I want to comment you on the, the, the logo, the, the Maxwell Center. Uh, you know, when we got into this, the, the word MRAC kept popping up. And I was thinking, I said, this is not going to fly. <laughs> I mean, this is just not going to fly. Yeah. But I think you did an outstanding job on that, and, and you and whoever was involved, uh, I, I think you hit a home run on that. Thank you. I will make sure the marketing committee and especially Jose are aware of that because um, they did do a, a really, everyone did a good job on that. Uh, we had input also from uh, Bria McCoy who did some versions of a logo and she's working on some other stuff for us. Um, she is also an in-house uh, person. She's a, an intern over in the communications right. department. So there is a lot of talent just right here in the county already uh, working. So that's a great thing. One last thing, Mr. Chairman. I see on your letterhead, 
you do have the Maxwell Regional Agriculture Convention Center. We, do you we intend do. to leave that on your letterheads? Yes, sir, we do. And it will also be on the building, on the front of the building and the back of the building in a, in a, in a couple different places. The full name will also be on the building. And that's what we told the Maxwell family is that we will leave the full name where we can. But when it comes to like a promoter, if he's having a boat show or something and he's advertising, he doesn't want to say that big long thing in his 30 second radio ad or take up newspaper space with all of that. So we wanted to shorten it so that for things like that, people would stick to it and they'd stick to our branding and we wouldn't have to worry about them shortening it. So basically we're telling them what we want it shortened to. Yes, sir. I, I agree with all the comments that said. Uh, I guess, see, after we open sometime, possibly February, uh, actually the hard work's ahead of us, right? Oh, yes. <laughs> we still have plenty of work to do. You've got a lot going on to get everything organized and so forth. But, you know, you come a long way in the short time you've been here. We have. We, we, of, we've made some good progress. Yes, and, you know, at times it seems slow going, but we've actually moved pretty fast on a lot of things. Well, I want to assure the public that what I know about uh, the Maxwell Center, that the, the money part of it, has been looked at very closely before we spent. That's one of the things that I, you know, you can you can have something really nice without, as a former commissioner used to say here on the board, without building a Taj Mahal. Exactly. So uh, I want to com commend you, uh, and also everybody at this point mm -hmm. that's dealt with this uh, center. Yep. It's going to be a great addition to our county and neighboring counties to the whole region. Really. It is. I think it's going to definitely be something to. <clears throat> excuse me, benefit uh, this area. I think it's going to bring folks in from the region and the state uh, when we get into the booking and down the road as we can get into the rotations for different associations and all of that. And so anytime you're bringing people in from the region and from all over the state, you're bringing money into this area because they're going to bring their money, they're going to stay at hotels, they're going to eat at restaurants, they're going to go shopping. And so the economic impact uh, is going to be really nice for this area. Chairman. Yes, sir. I would just like to say, I have about a 10 page statement I'd like to make, but I'll just <laughs> go there. I was just thinking about what a great thing this is for the citizens of Wayne County and what this is going to do for our youth that about what 60 to 70% of them leave the county mm -hmm. once they get out of high school and college. This is going to cause them to take another look at Wayne County and maybe. Uh, seek to remain and work and play in Wayne County. So uh, I am proud of what you're doing. I thank, want to thank uh, George and all the staff for uh, helping put this together, the Board of Commissioners. I think this is one of the greatest things that we have done lately. And uh, I applaud you for what you're doing. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Mr. Wade, I, was, you know, I appreciate everything you're doing too. And I also want to invite our ad committee back together because they've not met you and let you make a presentation to them and talk about some specific things. And John, I'll make sure you get invited because <laughs> we haven't met. This is a group that was comprised mostly of our farming community mm -hmm. that's really supported this thing from the beginning. And I've tried not to keep bothering them because I know they got to make a living and they don't have much time to go to a lot of meetings and that kind of thing, but we will we'll be doing that. So anyhow, we'll anyhow, we have a motion on the floor. Is there any additional discussion? Oh, uh, you did make a motion a long time ago. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Thank you, Mr. Wade. All right, thank you all. Okay, moving on. Um, the consent agenda, we talked about this at length in the um, opening session at 8 o'clock. Anybody discuss any more on that? Or? Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? Motion to approve the consent agenda. We have a motion on the floor. Is there any more discussion? All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Thank you. Moving on to new business. I'll ask Mr. Crumper to come up. Thank you. Um, you know, over the last several meetings, we've, we've had all types of interns that have been introduced here and in, in the planning department we've had an intern that's been serving here his name is connor jones and uh he is a rising urban and regional 
planning senior at Appalachian State University and as part of his degree requirements he's completing a 400 hour internship here with our department he's just about completed that he's done an outstanding job he's worked on several projects uh, uh, for us and he also is uh, very good at GIS and I think he's got a certificate in GIS that he is working towards uh, like I say, he is the son of Brian and Michelle Jones, who reside here in Goldsboro, and uh, we're just tickled to death that he has uh, been with us this summer. So I'd like to introduce him, and uh, thank him for his service for us. So he's been here for how long? 400 hours. 400 hours. <laughs> yeah, a few months, so. I, uh, this Friday is my last day, so. Really? It was a good thing he brought you in yeah. today. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell us what you've learned in as been working uh, Well, I've had the pleasure to work with not only Chip in the planning department, but also Julio in GIS coordination and uh, code enforcement. So I got a wide variety of um, experience in like this field. Um, I mean, like he said, I worked on a few projects. So just getting immersed in what's happening around Wayne County and all the projects that are going on. Um, and just all, all encompassing. Well, it's been a pleasure to have you. I'm sure it's taken a, a load of work off the chip because he, he works hard enough as it is. Have you got an old lined up to come in after he leaves? Or? Well, if, you know, we'll have him back if he wants to come. <laughs> <laughs> no, he said he 400 is, hours is enough. <laughs> he's the son of Brian Jones, who you see on a lot of submission of plats. Yeah. He is a professional engineer. His father is a professional engineer. Is going down the uh, track of urban and regional planning. So we appreciate him working with us. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now I have the pleasure of um, bringing up a good friend of mine, City Councilman Mark Stevens. He wants to bring us up to date on what's going on in his world. So you can get to the mic so they can hear you. Makes you so they can hear you because you're live on TV. Well, I'm live on TV. Wow. <laughs> that's, that's wonderful. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. How are you, commissioners? Um, the handout you're getting or is about a presentation that's getting ready to be given to you in regards to an effort to bring the technology industry to Wayne County and other as aspects to help you in the I guess seeking of bringing manufacturing and other jobs to increase the job market here in Wayne County. So, if you can take a look, it is front, the um, pages are front and back, so we can get started on that in just a minute. But before she gets all loaded up, I want you to do me a favor. And I'm going to give you this pin. And I want you to do me, like I said, do me a favor. If you have pins up there, I want you to put the pins down and leave them on the desk. Can't touch them. Cannot touch your pins. But I'm going to bring you a pin. But typically, we don't do this right before. What I want you to do with that pen is I want you to take it and pass it around and write down what you specifically would love to see for Wayne County in regards to jobs and the most important things that you believe that should happen here inside of Wayne County in regards to that. No, not no, not necessarily. <laughs> He's setting this up. I, I know that. Which <laughs> one? This one. 
Here we go. All right. So in regards to our PowerPoint presentation, here we go. So uh, have you all had a chance to write with that pen? It's going down the line. Okay. All right. Whatever, whatever you're finished with the pen, just um, pass it back to Miss Amanda Boyle here. Okay. So in regards to Dark Side Entertainment, we are, like I said, a graphic arts, and if you remember from the June 22nd ribbon cutting I had, we are a graphic arts and development of games and animation company. But let me tell you a little bit about the game industry. In 2013, the game industry employed over 1.7 million people from nationwide, from New York, and the eastern, eastern part of North Carolina, west, I guess the eastern part and western part of North Carolina, Wake County, all to where, as far as, you know, I would say Orange County and Marin County of California. Um, in 2015, they sold about $2.2 billion in revenue. And in 2020, the estimated revenue for this industry will be $46.1 billion. So I'm trying to figure a way and the best way to make sure that Wayne County is in the forefront and bringing that to Wayne County and making sure those jobs and revenue and tax full income is coming here for all citizens. So these are our Fortune 500 states and top five states where the Fortune 500 companies that are in Forbes that are talking about. California being number one because it is where the game industry pretty much started, but their taxable income that they bring to counties and to the state is around about $27 billion in, in, in rising. And as you take and take a look, it will be, you know, California, Texas, Washington State, and Washington State being up there at number three because that is where Microsoft started. So, you know, being a startup company as itself was one time. Now, Microsoft is a major, major corporation was out of the United States. And it breaks it down to Massachusetts. And then North Carolina being at the lower end because it didn't even really make the Forbes and Fortune 500 top list because I had to search and find it. But our taxable income right now inside of North Carolina with the small game industry that we do have here is $23 million of taxable income that is brought to the state and to Wake County where primarily a lot of the game studios are at. So you have Epic, Ubisoft, um, Spark Plug Games, all those game studios are towards Wake County and Durham County. But we're try I'm trying to do everything I can to bring it towards Wayne County in regards to my company. So basically just giving you overall detail and understanding of my company. Dark Side Entertainment LLC, what we do is we provide games and animations and graphical art, so work for hire. So they say you're talking about anything from your business cards, your banners, things of that nature. So we provide all that. And then we also provide a service where we can work with the community and work with young ones that would like to be in the digital arts field and the media arts field and give them an outlet to get a chance to be in this industry and bolster it from that. So that is where we're going. And right now we employ about six people, but with your help, that's why I come to you today in regards to things helping the in our company grow with your help in revitalizing a building that we would love to be in, we can employ 40 people within the next year, in this first year that we're being here. And then over the next course of years, by the third year, we'll be employing about 40 people more on top of the 40 people that we've already brought in and going from there. So by like our fifth year, you will have 150 people employed within inside of Wayne County that wants to be in this industry. And we've pretty much received about 200 so resumes which are attached to your packets that come from as far as Orange County, California, all the way to Wilmington and at Cape Fear County. And if you have to see some of those packets and those resumes, there are some from Missouri, 
in Farmington and all that. So it, it goes, it's a broad range. It's not just a small thing anymore. It's we're, you know, we've grown and this is an actual industry that wants to be inside of Lane <coughs> County. So, so, and so that is, oh, oh, the job market. Okay. So in regards to that, the job market can be ranging from these jobs from quality assurance testers, you know, digital arts and animators, and then just basically programmers, and also, in, also offering the film and broadcasting in, 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 um, internships, excuse me, internships for Wayne County and Wayne Community College students. So it gets them a chance to get in and bolster from there. But also what we're out to do and what we really want to be able to do because of our partnership with Microsoft, um, we are being able to allow them a development and publishing situation. So we're allowing them to also come in and build studios um, for themselves and be able to hire people so it basically breaks down your unemployment rate and to basically become third party developers as we be the publishers and allow them to get into the game industry where if you go to like a big gaming company such as EA or Epic or the one that's in Raleigh, Ubisoft, would not allow you to do that. We have made this, you know, effort and partnership with the industry to bolster this and offer it to young students that are coming out of Wayne Community College and the Wayne County Public School System that want to be in this industry to get them the first stepping stones into that industry. So basically, the future of Wayne County. Now, in regards to that, and when I say the future of Wayne County, you're talking about your manufacturing companies. We are here at the tech industry, and your manufacturing companies you want to bring in. I know I hear about it all the time within the, being within the city. You want to talk about manufacturing jobs. One of the main reasons that I've come to find out and study why manufacturing jobs have not really come this way is because we do not have fiber optics. Spectrum is a good system, but as far as high-speed internet is not affordable for what a lot of these companies are looking for. Um, that's why I say we need to find a way, see we can't partner and work with Google or AT&T to bring fiber into this area. One of the main reasons, because I have Google as a partnership as well with them, Google is looking at this area because we did take a chance and open up a studio here. So they're more looking at Wayne County to be like, let's see if we can work with the county commissioners and the city council and boost their, their fiber optics. Because inside of Wake County, uh, Google Fiber is very affordable. It's $70 at minimum, and they don't go per, per month or they go twice a term per month, but they go once a month and they move and work very affordable and basically come in and they build off your infrastructure for your high speed internet. So this is also the future in regards to for Wayne County. And then also with us being a developer and publisher for media arts and the digital arts field, we're allowing students to come in and basically give them a great chance to express their feelings and their emotions and their ideas into the world that no other studio is going to allow them to do without, you know, having multiple years in the industry and X amount of dollars and, you know, entertainment lawyers. So that's where I'm at, and I thank you for that. But before I do leave, did you guys get to write down everything that you wanted on that piece of paper on, with that pen? So if you did, if you can pass that paper along to your chair, everything that you wrote down which you would like to see happen for this county, we can bolster that with your help in regards to going in that direction. One main reason, like I said, they're all wanting to come here. You have a brand new taxable income base where you can have people that want to come into Wayne County and live. I know there's projects to try to bring businesses and other homes downtown. Where are they going to stay? There's your 
your livable and other taxable income right there. So thank you, gentlemen, and I appreciate you for your time and input. Well, Mark, I thought that was a special pen that was going to pop up there to show what we wrote down. All right, well, I wish it was. i tell you what. But that's where we're at today, gentlemen. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Okay, I'll pass these down to you. Of course, mine's written on a Something that I kind of need to keep, so. I'm holding on to mine. I need mine. But I've also, like I said, I've also brought others that are with me today that are very much from this industry and that are very intuitive about working and pushing this industry along. And as you can see, we have a large group of us today. But um, it's this industry is not a very small industry. It's a very large industry and can grow exponentially overnight um, just because of the things that go on. With like I said, your technology changes every six minutes. So from your cell phone, if you bought a cell phone two months ago, I guarantee you right now that cell phone has changed about three, four times and you got three new versions of it. So that's the level of degrees of things that are going on and that I think all of our students that are in Wayne County Public Schools and Wayne Community College students are wanting and need to know. So, Any questions of the council? Mark. Yes. If I was riding down the street with my grandson, who's 11 years old, yes, and what would your what would your industry what would what would what is it in there that would appeal to him? And, and let me preface this: he is a his daddy buys him all kind of games that he puts on his electronic gear, whether mm -hmm. it's the iPad or they're playing it through that smartphone. Mm -hmm. How is it going to? What 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 is what the impact is gonna have on him? What is he gonna want me to do? Well, in regards to gaming, gaming is at this at the point right now where it's changing into learning based as well as for fun play. You have a lot of games where it will teach you music. If you've seen and a lot of um, I know there's a lot of moms that are waiting in line at school. They play the tiles, and you're actually playing Mozart by hitting your finger against these tiles, and you're jumping across black, black tiles. But then there's also the learning-based side where we can develop a game that will teach students and children that are in school, which I know that they have in Wayne County Public Schools, um, iPad time. And they can get to play with the iPad, but they can also teach them their soft skills and learning how to coincide with one another, how to be friends with one another, and how to basically have conflict resolutions with each other and understand that we can. there's another way instead of fighting. There's also the situation where you can teach them how to use and learn how to um, work with robotics. And so basically starting them up with that and teaching them how to work inside of a an automatic or, or automatronic, uh, I guess what you call it, manufacturing center. There's that aspect. And then there's the aspect of pure fun and just relaxing and you have like spaceships shooting so, each other so and things it, of that nature. So you're going to, your firm is talking about developing games, it's going to be on some kind of a disc be, that they're going to insert in the electronics. No, and they're going to be playing it or working with it or doing something to it? No, it will not be um, inserted on a disc. It will literally be on your iPad. So instantaneously, if you wanted to go to the Play Store or your iStore, your Apple iStore, literally you go to your computer or you go to your tablet and you go to that store and you find the actual name of the game. Because okay. with right. the marketing, you slick on it and you All download right. it and it instantly comes to your phone. All right. I was, that's what I was trying to, yes. without being an electronic wizard, trying to figure out how it was going to get from where you are mm -hmm. to where he would be, which is the only way that you're going to make money out of it. Yeah. Somebody's going to have to access it. Mm -hmm. 
But this is literally, like I said, this is literally how the game industry is boosting itself. Because if you remember last summer, um, being in, in walking downtown Goldsboro or coming here to the courthouse and being here, around here, um, a lot of people were running around with their phones and their heads in their phones, and they're literally looking for these things called Pokemon. If you remember that Pokemon Go kind of phase last summer. Oh, yeah. That game in a weekend, it came out on a Friday, by that Monday had made $15 billion. And it employed, they only were employing about 20 or so people that made that game. And instantaneously that studio overnight hired more than, I guess, 55 people. And they still were making money and they're still at this time still making money because they're reiterating, revitalizing the game to make it more user friendly and have more aspects to it and move in that direction. So they're getting ready to re-release it and it'll be called, what's it, the children play it now? Roblox. So Pokemon Roblox and all these other things. And they're, they're just moving in that direction to keep expanding and keep the industry growing and having children and young ones that are it literally goes all the way up to the age of 65, and they're playing these games and having fun and and enjoying each other. Are you, Thanks, writing, are you writing games now? Yes. Apps. Uh, right now, we're making apps. Um, we're making animations, which um, hopefully this is like, like I, I've talked with uh, Governor Cooper. I've talked with uh, representatives, um, John Bell, Larry Bell. Um, and I've caught with a deputy uh, director for Congressman Rouser. Uh, this is also an initiative to bring back the film industry and start it here with, you know, Goldsboro. Because like I said, we're not just one thing. We don't just do games, but we do develop animation. We develop, you know, film. We develop, you know, all these things. And so it's not just one field. And it's like, oh, that's all you do is games. This industry is very like collective we do games we do animation and if you're a studio like us you have a, a potential to do all these things and grow the area that you're in very significantly all right council six i appreciate your coming over today and updating us and i'm sure you and i'll be talking yes sir well, it's good to talk to you thank you all you have a wonderful day. You too. Thank you. Ms. Spade, I believe you're up next. Good morning. <coughs> I want to go over the county um, interim financials through April 30th first, and then we'll do tourism last. You received a packet on the county financials, and I believe there's about four or five pages attached. Um, so I'm going to start on the second page, and you've seen this format before. Um, it gives you sort of a summary through April and then compares to April of last year of where the county stands. And, of course, this is not audited, so um, as we're winding up our, we'll have wound, wound up our fiscal year and trying to close it out in our software, we'll be getting that information to our auditor shortly. And so hopefully she will have an audit report to you, um, hopefully by the end of the calendar year, to give you the audited financials. So this is through April 30th, and I'm just gonna draw your attention to a few major items, and then if you have some questions, just please let me know. Uh, cash invested for April of 2016, as you noticed, it has decreased. Um, and you are all aware of the various projects that we have been spending cash down on. Um, of course, we've spent, we spent a lot of money on the jail to finish that project up. And then the Maxwell Center, um, we started incurring quite a bit of cost for that. However, we, you will all be glad to know, as I was, that since we were able to close on our bonds by June 30th, our cash went up at June 30th. So you will see that reflected in the audit. And that's what we were trying to do was make sure we had those bonds closed so that we could get our first reimbursement back by June 30th and our cash would go up by June 30th. Uh, and I will give you a report on what that bond reimbursement looked like in a few minutes. So the April 2016 revenues over expenditures at um, April 2016 was 12.4 million. 
At this point, it is at 1.9 million. And again, this is just due to the fact that we've had several expenditures um, drawn down on the various capital projects that um, the county is working on. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna go to is the selected revenues. And these are your property taxes and your sales taxes, which of course is our major sources of revenues uh, for the general fund. And if you look at the current and current tax levy and then the current vehicle tax levy, um, you will see, let me go to your, and I have a, your first page, by the way, summarizes these highlights that I'm going over. But you will see that the property taxes exceeded um, last year at this time by 760, roughly 764,000. And then our sales taxes at April 30th exceeded last year's at April 30th by 868,000 roughly. This does include the Article 44 receipts that we are now receiving. Um, you remember that took place last year. That involved um, the changing of an adjustment factor that determines how much we get. It also involved a reallocation of some of the other articles and redistributing it based on that new adjustment factor. So thankfully, Wayne County has benefited from that. Um, if you will look back a few pages, there is a chart in your packet. And I'm gonna jump to that because that I know is what you all like to see is the sales tax um, chart. And it looks like this, our chart. This has about 21 months of data on it. Um, and as I've gone back and looked month by month, every month exceeds the month of the prior year, except for October. And as you recall from my last financial presentation, we, we suspect that probably had to do with Hurricane Matthew. But all the other months have seen an increase over the prior year. <coughs> Okay, and the next thing I want to point out to you is if you look at your summary financial report under the selected revenues, I've gone over the property taxes, I've gone over the sales taxes. After that, it kind of breaks it out into your various departments. And you have like services on aging, DSS, health, and all those various departments broken out, um, what their April 30th revenues and expenditures are compared to budget and those percentages. Um, I won't read those numbers off to you, and if you have a question, please let me know. Um, I'm going to jump down to the last page of that report because usually I provide you with a, an update on the capital projects, but I decided since we had so many that were bond financed, I wanted to break them out between non-bond financed and bond financed projects. So um, this does not have the bond finance projects on it, and I'll, I'll show you where those are in a minute. But the only two projects we had remaining at April 30th that were non-bond finance were just wrapping up the jail facility, and I think we might have had a couple of invoices left after, after April 30th, and then the 911 center, which we've not had a lot of expenditures on yet, um, but there are, there are some in there, about 78,000 roughly. So the next page I want to send you to, and I'm sorry for jumping all around, but I wanted to give you some information that might be a little more useful to you other than just the regular financial report. There is a, I think it's the last page in your packet, and it's, it's titled County of Wayne Reimbursement Request Number One. Mr. Wood and I discussed a lot about the fact that the bonds needed to close by June 30th, so I just wanted to take the time to show you why that was so important to us. Um, this was the first reimbursement request that we submitted. Um, the bonds closed and then we submitted on June 28th our first reimbursement request so that we could receive it by June 30th. And this is basically the form that I use, but what it gives you is a, a kind of a list of ex or a summary of expenditures by project that this bond financing um, reimbursed to us this first time around. So the Maxwell Center, and I will adjust my title on there to say Maxwell Center. It says MRAC right now. <laughs> um, but the Maxwell Center uh, total expenditures at, the, at that point was a little over, closer to $11.7 million. And then the Fiber Loop Project, 232000 The Sheriff Software is the Spielman Project, and that is 798000 roughly. There is a small part of that project that's going to be allocated to the 911 center, and we hope to receive state board revenues on that amount. So that's separate from the bond monies. Meadow Lane, we had spent roughly about $809,000 on. 
and then um, there's a couple of them that have not have, that we've not seen any expenditures for yet that was the gym and classrooms and the HVAC systems the street assessments at that time we had spent twenty nine thousand five hundred dollars and then the sewer related expenditures for Grantham school seventy thousand nine hundred dollars so we received a total reimbursement from the bonds of twelve point six million dollars by June 30 which greatly helped our cash balance at the end of the year now you'll notice I deducted a million dollars that is the amount that I wanted to make sure we could go ahead and receive mr. wood and I had spoken and we wanted to go ahead and get that reimbursed from the North Carolina Tobacco Trust Commission and we received a million five in total but five hundred thousand dollars is being reserved for the farmers market so we will actually not request reimbursement for that until we incur those expenditures which I think is towards the end of the Maxwell Center project um, I've done a real high level overview I didn't want to just stand up here and read numbers to you do you have any questions or is there anything specifically you want me to jump to on this report questions <clears throat> I'm sitting here trying to add up all these numbers <laughs> 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 I just want to make sure that this year versus last year that our sales taxes are actually greater than they were last year that's right that's right and, and, and that's that's really amazing yes because and we all felt like that with the bypass opening and, and we're we're talking about getting into the summer months here right that it would really draw well and at first my thought was the article 44 receipts however I can't say that that is the only thing that bailed us out because that is actually a reallocation of your other articles which means that still is based on sales um, those articles there's two of them based on sales and, and one based on per capita so um, that article 44 did help us but it is it is a function of the sales that that were but um, even if you down. just add up the other three right they seem to be greater than now I want to point out because this will come out during audit time um, the sales taxes will probably not quite hit what we budgeted so that's dip but that's different than what we're saying as far as comparing this year to last year um, we were we were kind of at a loss as to what exactly to budget for sales tax when we budgeted for the 16 17 fiscal year because we had this article 44 adjustment and we were experiencing quite a bit of growth without that so we used some NCACC numbers we scaled back a bit to be conservative but you are going to see some difference there we didn't quite reach those numbers but it actually was not as far off as what I was afraid it might be so yes we are com you know comparatively last year we are ahead but I don't want you to be misled when you see the audit you may see that we're we're some under on budget and that's it's just a function of that there was so many changes going on it was hard to guesstimate what that increase was going to be but it was an increase so that's the important part any other questions anybody else I just wanted to highlight that even though cash balances were down you now reimburse that that's right. right and we were just using that prepaying some dollars until right. we actually went to the bond market. and I double checked at June 30 what our cash balances were and they are up so okay. I wanted to make sure I wasn't just saying that to you but yes okay. they have increased significantly so you'll see that reflected in the audit well, as well anybody looking at this just on its face would look like my gosh these guys have spent all the cash <laughs> but it was just a temporary it's a difference in time yeah. that's correct okay thank you Mr. Chairman. Any other questions on the counties? Before you move on to the uh, tourism, I've been told we need a five minute break. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> we all recess. <laughs> Okay, so my second presentation is for Wayne County Tourism Development Authority, and this is also through April 30th, but I did bring some June 30 numbers just so you would have an idea of where we ended through the fiscal year. But for April 30th, um, pretty much still good news. We were tracking well over budget. Um, total revenues that we had budgeted was $132,400, and at April 30th, we were at $148,83. Um, 
in the expenditures, we've, we've paid out an audit fee, and then most of the expenditures that we have um, are towards advertising and promotion, and then towards our contractual agreement with the city to pay half of their tourism-related salaries. Um, you will notice that one of the expenditures, advertising and promotion, exceeded budget, but we did do a budget amendment for that after April 30th and corrected that. So very quickly, I didn't give you June 30 because these are not audited, but I'll just give you kind of a quick update. Um, we ended the year, roughly there will be some adjustments made with the audit, but we ended the year at 170497 the third page that I gave you is the approved budget for 2017-2018. And that has been approved by the Tourism Development Authority, the board members. Um, and we work with the City of Goldsboro since we do not have a lot of historical information on our side. We work with Kay Scott, their finance director, to um, kind of project what kind of growth we were expecting. So we are anticipating total revenues of $158,880. And as you can see, we've reserved the portion that goes to Mount Olive, the 70% of the 1% that's derived from um, the hotels in Mount Olive. And then the remaining expenditures are mostly just audit fees and then the advertising promotion and salaries. Any questions on the tour? Yes, 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 sir. <coughs> the reserve for town of Mount Olive, mm -hmm. is that what Mount Olive generated or is that what they get out of the whole package based upon their being involved in the whole package? Okay, so the way the contract reads is any hotels in Mount Olive, they receive, they have to pay 1% like all the hotels in Wayne County, okay. but specifically the hotels in Mount Olive the town of Mount Olive receives 70% of that 1%. Okay. The remaining 30% of that 1% goes to the Tourism Development Authority. So the town of Mount Olive got 70% of $12,000? Which, which statement are you looking no, at? Yeah, I'm, got sorry. I'm looking at the last page. Yeah, so you're looking at the budget. Okay. So if that's correct. And if you look at the if you look at the top under revenues, the way we have our revenues broken out, Mr. Marty, we have revenues that exclude Mount Olive, which is the $141,340. All right. And then the other two revenues are, if you added them together, that's the 1% total that we're expecting to receive from the hotel in Mount Olive. And we've broken it out, 70% of that goes to Mount Olive and 30% goes to the Tourism Development Authority. So what's reserved to Mount Olive is, is not 70% of 12,000, it's 12,278. Right. Which is a lot higher than we thought it was going to be. Yeah, it's a lot higher. Now, one thing I did want to stress is the agreement, and the reason we put that as a reserve is the agreement says that the town of Mount Olive has to make a request to this development authority on how to spend that money. So, for instance, so, if they want to do, let's say, $8,000 promoting the Mount Olive Pickle Festival, they simply, the board takes action down there, makes a request. That's obviously tourism related. We would approve it. The only reason we're looking at it to review it is to make sure that the expenditure meets the statutory requirement to be tourism related because ultimately the, the responsibility for that falls on the county because you've you've levied the tax so that's why the agreement was written that way but any reasonable request they make that is tourist related you know we're not going to we're not going to debate how much money they should give somebody or something like that that's their call as long as so, it's tourism related we're going to approve it so between the town of Mount Olive and the tourism in Mount Olive they have access to twelve thousand dollars. Well, they actually have they actually have more than that. That's what we're budgeting for the seventeen eighteen year. So, at June 30, 2017, we had collected on behalf of Mount on, on Mount Olive's portion that seventy percent of one percent is ten thousand two hundred and thirty two dollars. Again, this is without any adjustments by our auditors. That is in addition to what was collected the prior fiscal year, those six months that we operated of our first fiscal year. And 
that amount was $6,873. So, I mean, about $17,000 at the end of June 30, 2017, that they have accumulated and they have not requested any of those funds. And, and then time. it'll grow by the 12,000 or so this year. So, so, I, so I, without me being really stupid, the amount, town amount of dollars generated, what they get is what they generated, not what something on Highway 7 generated. Right. right. They're only, getting what they generated. Only They're from the Mount Olive Hotels. Yeah, and the thing, thing to remember is, and, and the only one down there right now is the sleep in. Right. And remember, everybody, all the other hotels are in Goldsboro. Right. So they're paying 5% to Goldsboro. That's their um, occupancy tax, plus 1% to the county. Sleep in obviously is not in Goldsboro, right. so they don't pay the five percent, they only pay the one percent to the county. Does that help? Okay, any other? Mount Olive requested it to be done this way. Yes, I, I was in the middle of the, <laughs> this conversation negotiation. All I was trying to get a, have a real fix on was. Who generated the money that Mount Olive has access right. to? Did Mount Olive generate all of the money that they have access to? Or are they yeah. sweeping in on some off of Highway 7? No, they, that's what I want. That's what they're I not want entitled to any of that because right, right. That's what I. That was the found. Yeah. That was what I. Right. So what they're getting is what. They're getting out of the pot that they that was generated in Mount Olive. That's right. correct. That's and correct. and I do send them a monthly report to, um, to the town question. manager there just to let him know what's been accumulated so far yeah. for them. So Charles is aware of it. He knows what sure, what's sure. there. Any other questions? I also said on that board with you about the growth of the occupancy tax, and the cost of the growth of the revenue in Broadwood hotels mm -hmm. is just tremendous. Yeah. Um, it's a over last year, I think it's up almost 12%, you know, collecting over $8 million, almost nine. And most people wouldn't know that kind of tourism dollars come in from these hotels, but it's big money. Well, I, I would only like to add what, what our chairman said, and, and I will quote the out-of-county person that asked me this, but I had a person ask me time, say, where in the world does all those people come from that's uh, staying in those hotels along in my uh, in my Olive? I said, I mean, we're attracting people because of Seymour <coughs> Johnson, I would imagine, on the weekends and just a whole conglomerate thing. But it is exciting and mm -hmm. rewarding and a little surprising that we're attracting the kind of folks that's going to generate those dollars. And the fact that, this, yes, ma'am, the hotels are full and those restaurants along there, you know, like everybody that comes from everywhere to try to eat in those we, places. You know, and one of the things we discussed at the um, Tourism Development Authority also is that this is before two major attractions open because the city's soccer complex doesn't really open till next spring mm -hmm. and the Maxwell Center doesn't open until March 1. So these numbers have been growing and we don't even have our two major attractions yet. And so we, we obviously expect to see a good increase based on those. And I would like to uh, just give a little shout out to the University of Mount Olive. Uh, favorites to put in a soccer slash lacrosse field down there. And when that's really, the way that I understand it, when that's really up and fully competitive, there's going to be a lot of folk coming in yeah. uh, that we haven't seen yet. Teams, I mean, it's a good thing. It is. Thank you, Ms. Lake. Thank you. County manager comments. I'll uh, wait before we do that. Remember, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot. Julio was going to show you real quick. I got such. This is an addition, and mm -hmm. he's going to. Um, he's updated the GIS. Um, well, I'll let him tell you. Today is August the first. <laughs> 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 yes, sir, it is, and I have made the request to get the switch thrown. So hopefully, here in, uh, within this week, that switch will be completely thrown, and the old website will be decommissioned. So. Anyway, uh, as Carol was mentioning, I did do a uh, quick update to the uh, website. Uh, last time I was here, uh, Mr. Cromarty made a uh, comment concerning the uh, senators on the map, and the only thing we had at that point in time was the um, was the district number. Let's try to see if we can get it here. There we go. 
I've taken it upon myself to enhance the website a little bit. Get it to come up. There we go. At, during the time of the meeting, during the, or the initial presentation of this application, yes, we only had what district number uh, Senator um, had, District 7 or District 10 or District whatever. Now, we've added a little bit more to it. We've added not only the the shading, but we have also added the name right here. If I were to zoom into my property again, this and again using my own property here, or any property for that matter, <coughs> again I can click on my property. My information comes in, but now it also tells me who my senator is not just District uh, 7, but also tells me who my senator is. But I can also click link to senator. And it'll bring up my senator's webpage here in a few moments. That is the senator that, uh, for my district. Now, this not only applies to the senators, but also applies to NC State House as to which house uh, my property belongs to. And that is my representative for my property, as well as also showing, if I zoom out to the entire county, the different divisions, who my representatives are or who the representatives are for Wayne County. But it not only stops there, I also have it for my congressman, my senator, house, as well as my county commissioners. And if I were to zoom in a little bit to say this area right here, <laughs> and bring up a property, just a random property here, it'll show me who, the, who lives there, as well as who the commissioner is for that district. Link to commissioner. Recognize that guy. You're male famous. And then, uh, just for the take of it, all the other representatives that represent that area. Yes, sir. Everybody, it shows up. Congressman, senator, rep House of Representatives, uh, commissioner, and also Board of Education. All are linked in a similar way. Just Get ready to add a phone to ring off. Of the, <laughs> the, 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 the at large commissioner to black sheep of the family, though. <laughs> <laughs> but we can see who, who um, our current commissioners are, what regions they represent as well. So, yes, sir. Um, Mr. Cromarty, uh, thank you for that suggestion. We went ahead and enhanced. Uh, or map based on your suggestion. Great. Questions, gentlemen? Well, and, and the, you, over the last several years, a lot of things have changed, and yes. folk are constantly asking that question who represents me doing this or that? Yes. Sir. And if I understand you correctly, they can just do www.gis. Uh, they, can, they, they can go to the county website, wayngov.com. Wayngov.com. Okay. Um, go to the uh, GIS department and then click on this map. However, I'm going to get a hold of the uh, Wayne County Board of Elections, and we already have a link directly to this map and have it posted on their uh, Board of Elections map for the county. Board of Edge. That would make it easier for Wayne County residents to be able to say, who, who represents me? Who is my congressman? Who is my commissioner? Who, who is my representative? Just with one click. So Joe Citizen, you go on there and, and wait, uh, gov com GIS, and put in an address for a piece of property, and it'll show the dimensions and so forth and so on. Yes, sir. 218. Okay. 
say for example, I can input an address or search for it this way. Either way works. There we go. Just by going into an area, say this area right here, I can click on U.S. Con Congressional, NC Senate, State House, and Board of Education, and it'll show me who is, every, who is my representative. Mayor, Gray Mayo, Dave Browser, Mr. West, John Bell, Lewis Bay. All just by looking at the map itself. Or if I were to click on this property right here, it will give me the same information but now I have them all listed here in one page and a link to each one. It worked. Thank you. It is good work. All right. Gentlemen, any questions? Good job. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Job. One last question doesn't have yeah. anything to do with this. Yes, sir. You've been with us how many months or weeks? Uh, started November of last year. And are you a Wayne County or transplant to Wayne County? How did you get to us? I'm just curious. Um, I was ex-military and I was stationed at uh, Seymour Johnson Air Force Base and I like the area so much I decided to stay. Right. Good. Good answer. Yes, sir. <laughs> I might add one thing. He's also the interpreter for uh, inspections, planning, and environmental health. He's also uh, fluent in uh, Spanish. So he's our interpreter. Good. Thank you, sir. Thank you. If he was in the Air Force, he's a good man. <laughs> John, John. Mr. Wood. Um, just a quick update. We continue to work on a number of projects. Obviously, the uh, Maxwell Center is the biggest one. Uh, continuing with the plans development on the 911 Center, also with the um, uh, sewer project out at Grantham. Uh, those are the three main things we're working on right now, as well as uh, the EMS stations. And I believe we may have uh, gotten the fourth piece of property this week. And if so, then we can move forward with that. Uh, the project uh, for Canterbury started a week ago Monday, and uh, that's moving along well. Uh, the other project that has started is the uh, pad out at the uh, industrial park. That'll take roughly 20 to 25 days. So we are uh, now sending out our um, RFQ for a design build on the um, spec building. Because as you know, we can't do the spec building until that pad is ready. But it's, it's time now to go ahead and get that out there. We'll review those, come back to you with a recommendation, uh, award that contract, and then we'll be ready to go on getting that uh, shell building built. So that's kind of an update on the major projects that we're doing. Uh, we're still in the process of negotiating about three design contracts that you've awarded, and uh, Craig and I are do doing those now. Uh, one thing that Alice and I will be working on over the next couple of weeks is uh, you saw where we have drawn down the bond money, and I thought she gave a very good detailed explanation on that. The one other thing that we want to draw down now is um, we have that USDA, those two USDA loans. One is for the um, uh, agricultural center portion of the, of the Maxwell Center. The other is um, uh, for the actual uh, convention center part. So we want to go ahead and get that paperwork done now that we've gotten everything straightened out on that. And, uh, you know, that's worth about $2.3 million to us on that. So we want to get. Uh, reimbursed on that and if you remember that that grant is a reimbursement type so you go ahead and spend the money and then we we file for that um, the one other thing I did want to mention is tomorrow uh, Craig and I and um, Mel and uh, our the rest of our committee will be uh, traveling to um, Sand Hills Community College which is in Moore County and from there, we'll then go to Cape Fear Community College to uh, look at their public safety training facilities and then come back home. So this, this will be a day trip. We won't be staying overnight on it. But this is the fourth and fifth um, facility that we're going to look at. And then we'll be able to uh, start our uh, 
deliberations with the architect about uh, what components do we think we need to include in this. So uh, we're moving forward with that. And as y'all know, we made the trip, uh, I think it was two weeks ago, to uh, three other facilities. So that uh, has moved along very well. That's pretty much it. Uh, again, we've got uh, all of these projects. Uh, that's where we're spending the bulk of our time now, just trying to get those squared away. And the other thing, obviously, as you've heard from uh, James Wade, uh, he and Craig are spending an awful lot of time on getting the policies and procedures in place so we can open. And as he indicated to you, uh, seven months is going to fly by. So we're trying to get all that in place to be ready to go. That's pretty much the <coughs> overview. Uh, does anybody have any questions? Uh, I got one, Mr. Wood. Uh, I guess I'm kind of putting the cart before the horse. Uh, the committee that's uh, going around looking at the facilities for the college for the first responders, is the fire marshal on that committee? No. His boss is. His boss? Mel. Oh. <laughs> Think, let's let's think about Brian being involved some too. He is the fire marshal. Just a thought. Mr. Chairman, I did have a question. <coughs> Said seven months. Uh, isn't it about time for us to begin working on our farmers market? We are, it's designed, and we should be out for bids in about a month. Good news. About I left, a month. I left that one off my list. We're working <laughs> on that too. We've got so many, I've got a spreadsheet. I should have so, brought it in. So that, that should be ready for the spring of next year? Oh, yeah, yeah. No, our, our plan, I'll get inside, Joe, our plan is, is it will be ready to open the same time as, as um, the Maxwell Center itself. We are also, and I haven't mentioned this, is we're also working on the greenhouse. Now, that's a much more easy structure. That's a kind of a package, uh, and Kevin is working on that. And what we'll need to do there is form up the, um, you know, the flooring on it. But uh, that's, that's one you kind of buy off the shelf, and we're getting that from one of the local companies that does greenhouses. The one other building we'll have, and we'll be doing that, uh, starting on that shortly as well, and that's the storage building out there at the sedimentation pond. Uh, Y'all remember that? We're, that's where we're giving Kevin some storage area back there. Uh, if you remember, he's got those eight little red barn looking little yeah. storage things. We're doing away with those. We're gonna have one nice uh, metal building storage facility. And, uh, Soil and water will also have access to some of that space, but predominantly it will be for um, um, Kevin's operation. And the, <clears throat> the second thing is, uh, if you go back and find out what we still have remaining for naming rights, I know we have not had anyone that stepped forward in regards to naming of the, the hall. I think that's the only thing that's left. <coughs> Anything else is, is that the only thing? Yeah. So if you get with Wade and make sure that maybe in his travels and so forth, maybe he can find somebody that may step up to the plate. We'll try to do that. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I believe he does have some ideas he shared with me. Okay. Anything else? Not a, Any sore, a sore subject, but how's our bottomless pit out there? The digging in the pond. <laughs> well, uh, you know, we agreed to the change, and so things are moving along now. Uh, you know, we've, we've got the game plan. We just got to see how it goes. and uh, But everything's moving on that. Same thing, you know, we had the same similar issue with the um, pad out at uh, Lot 8, and they're moving forward with that. So everything's moving forward on both those projects. Very good. Anybody else? Oh, we'll the commissioner comments. Mr. Bale. Mr. Chairman, I don't have any reportable information to report today, but I would like to yield my time to a good friend that may get in trouble once I do this. <laughs> I'd like to yield my time to Mr. Joe Doherty. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to get in there? <laughs> I, yes, please let him go. I want to hear what he's doing. <laughs> uh, 
I'm happy to report that on Thursday I'm leaving for a 10-day cruise. Uh, enjoy the summer. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Bell. <laughs> and I would like, I'm sorry, I forgot your name, sir, but because you have the expert technology, is there anything we can insert in him so that we can track him and make sure that when he gets lost, I Oh, yes, I've, you know, as, as all of us are, we're busy going to meetings and, and, and different functions, and I won't bore you with all of them. Uh, we have had several Highway 7 Quarter Commission meetings, and uh, things are, uh, you know, uh, kind of stale for Wayne County when it comes to Highway 70 Quarter, because we've got ours completed, and the other counties that's in the group have not. Uh, so they're working diligently to, uh, to let's go ahead and get uh, Highway 70 uh, upgraded to interstate status, but it, it, you know, it's going to take years to get it done, but at least we're moving in the right direction. Uh, also, we have uh, had a uh, Board of Trustees meeting at the college. Uh, we have some new board, some new trustees on the board at the college. The governor has made his appointee, the county has, and the school board has. Uh, and uh, talk to some of the uh, trustees that has gone off of the uh, board at the college, and they wanted to express, uh, especially the ones that had been appointed by the commissioners of uh, this board of commissioners and the previous board of commissioners, how much they appreciated this, uh, this board and the previous board in putting the trust and confidence in them to, uh, to serve on that board, and they were very, very appreciative of, uh, of the boards, uh, giving them the opportunity and the pleasure to serve on that board. And that's, uh, that's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Right. Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, in a few meetings, uh, first one is the Gulf Road Wayne Transportation Authority. Uh, that's our public transit system. And it's still, it's still looking good financially, but there's been some grants and so forth that have been I cut back, so we're going to, it's not going to affect us too much, but this coming year we're anticipating not being quite as lucrative or profitable as it's been being, along with, we always have to keep in mind, one of the reasons we're, we're showing profit is because of fuel, the price is down, right. so we sort of have to be careful. The other thing is um, the, as, as the county manager mentioned, Mr. Wood, the North Street and Canterbury uh, Street repair. I, uh, I, I was going to ask, ask you a question. You may or may not know this, but when this when this project is toward end of completion, I know that that Lane Street uh, has their petitions and everything in, and I think they're still below what, where they need to be. Will there be a time? Uh, have we set a time to where they will be cut off and, and <coughs> out of the priority list? Have we discussed that at all? Uh, no, we haven't. Because okay, you, you pretty different. much you pretty much put it on hold because yes, we did. of the two-year uh, uh, wait period in, the, in our policy. Yeah. So we have not taken any action on it, and this board would have to take action on that. Well, but if you recall, what we did with Canterbury is we gave them about a. I think it was about a 30-day period to where uh, they could go out and try to get everything, get the signatures there, and then we went through and evaluated it. Yeah. But so I would think you would do something like that. But that'll be determined when this board decides to well, move forward on that. That petition and keep it at 75 percent or above, the better off we're going to be. And so they're they're working on that as we speak to try to get that number uh, up. Is that okay for them to do that? Well, it's okay for them to do that. I think the, I think the real issue is going to be um, uh, the board making a determination of um, when you're prepared to go forward with that because the <coughs> policy is uh, $2.5 million every two years, mm -hmm. and you're just now spending the uh, – this, this one's going to be – I forgot what we're, where we're at right now. I think about 1.8, unless we hit some change orders. Uh, so you're just now spending that money. So the question for the board is, 
uh, at which point would you want to consider lane tree? So I would think that's the first uh, decision that needs to be made. Now, we discussed this at the planning retreat, yeah. is my recollection, yeah. and it did not, it was not a goal that the board set for the current year. So it would be up to the board whether they want to do something different. Okay, all right, thank you. <clears throat> well, to continue uh, real quick, Mr. Chairman, uh, being on the uh, DSS board along with Commissioner Doherty, we, <clears throat> we had uh, yesterday, the last day <clears throat> of July was the last day of our advertising for taking applications for our new uh, Department of Social Services Director. So the next uh, few weeks are going to be pretty busy for this DSS uh, board. Uh, we have some understanding is we have some really good qualified candidates, so we'll just have to see how that pans out. Mainly, they have to qualify from the state level. So we're waiting for that to happen so we can start our uh, interview process. The other thing I want to remind, I've been in several meetings, as a matter of fact, in the last month, probably four. Uh, I want to just, just say, because this does affect our economic development here in Wayne County, uh, as everybody knows, the North Carolina Apprenticeship Program is being transferred to the community colleges. And the tra the, that process is going to take over a year. So basically what's happened is so much to transfer. Basically what's happened is, is that we're still operating uh, as of right now because August 1st was supposed to be the start date under uh, under the community college, it ain't gonna happen, folks. It that's too much to do. So, but having said that, encourage our community college, and and I'm doing this too. To and they are they're on the ball to make sure that this transfer is seamless because it's critical that we still continue to train. Uh, we need to continue to train people for jobs in Wayne County, and apprenticeship programs will be part of that. So I just wanted to update the board that uh, I'm, I've been heavily involved in trying to get that transition to be uh, as seamless as possible. And the community college is doing a great job. We've attended meetings in Raleigh trying to get all this, but it's a huge, it's a huge undertaking. The apprenticeship program statewide. It's not a small department. Can I ask a question? Are, are you pleased that it's making that transition over to the community college system? I want to start with, but uh, being on the workforce uh, commission that the governor uh, McCroy appointed me to before he left office, what I found out is, is that South Carolina, their, their director was there of commerce. And, and, and what they said of the community college, I'm sorry, for the whole state. He's been there for 25 years, I got his card, but he gave a presentation. What happened is, uh, South Carolina, 15 years ago, and some change, moved their apprenticeship program from the Department of Labor into the community college. They have grown over the last 15 years from 350 registered apprentices at that time to over 6,000 today. What happens is if you get all the community colleges on board and don't let it die, support is the key from the community colleges as well as from the state and our local uh, commissioners and Wayne County Development Alliance, all of us need to support it. it, it can really be a huge, huge increase in enrollment across the state. So yes, I am in favor of it. I was not years ago because it was tried, and the sponsors of the apprenticeship program stopped it in the legislature. That's when, uh, that's when um, Sager was, was up there in, in the legislature. So yes, I am, I am in favor of the transition. Okay. Uh, am I the you going to be next? Are you drawing? Uh, yes, I'm fine. Okay. Mr. Wood, may I ask you why you asked him that question? You I'm asked him. Here in the <laughs> because it was, uh, as I understood it, it was with the Department of Commerce. 
it seemed to me it makes sense to put it with the community college system. But I just want to give Ray's opinion because he, he, he has apprentices. He has an apprenticeship program. So as a manufacturer, I was just curious about what he thought of it. But it seems to make sense, and South Carolina seems to bear that out, that as you're teaching the courses at the college, then you work with a network of uh, people out in the community who have these jobs, and you try to place the kids in those jobs as apprenticeships. To me, it, it makes a lot of sense, but I was just curious how, you know, how Ray viewed it. Oh, uh, sure. No, go ahead. No, you go ahead first. Sure, could I? Yeah, go ahead. I'll say something very important. <clears throat> Mr. Wood, one of the reasons that um, us sponsors, which is over 400 uh, industry sponsors of the apprenticeship program, the reason we were against it years ago is because we, when you look at a journeyman certificate for machinists, and it has North Carolina Department of Labor or North Carolina Department of Commerce, which I have both hanging in our offices, mm -hmm. on that certificate, it has more of a mental impact than if you have uh, just a local community college. Now, this has nothing to do with putting down our college, okay, because I'm fixing a remedy to that. What they do in South Carolina is on the certificate, you can get a state certificate and also a federal. The one on the federal has the U.S. community college system. <coughs> so what I'm saying is I wanted to make sure that when a certificate is given, like for uh, a journeyman uh, machinist, which you can get a job anywhere in the world, I wanted a department that's given that certificate to be a recognizable in entity, okay? And we have that. So that's very important that wherever you show that certificate, where it be in anywhere in the world, it needs to be recognizable, and it is. Okay. So thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, over the last uh, 25 or so years, 30, uh, my relationship with vocational technical education has seen the conversation of apprenticeship rise and fall and uh, the, the business of getting folk into the apprenticeship trail oftentimes is akin to them getting a job at a big business that calls for a lot of background so forth and so on and for the lot of folk who need the greatest amount of apprenticeship training, some of their background things will hold them off. Uh, companies that do extensive and thorough and intensive background checks will probably be an impediment to folk coming from background situations where they may have a record or something or some background that may keep them from going to work for a large company that has a great reputation. Because that's where the apprentice, in the past, and unless it's changed, that's where the apprenticeship spots sponsored by the state are going. <clears throat> I, I, I just think that I would love to see the community college make a great effort to go to, in some enticing way, small trades folk who can teach people how to weld and do a lot of other things and have an apprenticeship arranged with them. Because I, unless, this change, unless this is gonna change, the bureaucracy of getting into an established apprenticeship position with a company, even the size of Mr. Mayo's and all up to giant size, is difficult. And, and so, if we're not careful, and I don't mean to be negative when I say that, but if we're not careful, we'll still be talking about folk getting into apprenticeship positions five, ten years from now, unless we go after the opportunity to put them with folk who will train them without the greatest steep of bureaucracy that you're going to find in the official North Carolina apprenticeship environment. And I've listened to a lot of conversations over the last number of years, and I still see us still talking about making that great leap towards apprenticeships, and 
that's why I just asked you what I, I want to hear more about what there's something different. Well, my sense is that if South Carolina went from 350 a year to 6,000 a year in a 15 year thing, there obviously the trend line is up and it's up pretty dramatically. Yeah. So I would say it looks like it's working. We're getting those people into the pipeline, and that's the key is, is get them trained at community college, get certifications, like Ray said, that makes them competitive in, the, in that chosen field and get them that first job through, a, through an apprenticeship. Could I ask the office to do this? Ask South Carolina, get South Carolina to send us something to show where they were normally placed when it was about 350 and where they're placed now at the 6,000 number. I, I think that would be, you know, I'm not for reinventing the wheel. I want to see what someone else is doing that's, that has, can brag about success because I would like to see where they are being placed at in, in South Carolina. He's had, to build, he's had to build a network of companies that are employing them. Well, I mean, to go from 350 to 6,000, you've, right. to you've got to have gone out and sought out these employers. They, they get, Mr. Chairman. Hmm? They got to be Mr. Chairman. Yes. Could I say something? Else? Oh, as far as uh, South Carolina, also keep in mind, South Carolina is heavily, heavily populated with manufacturing. Uh, over 1,200 of those apprentices are just for Michelin Tire Corporation in Greenville, South Carolina. Mm -hmm. I've, I've done business with these people. So in order to get qualified people, businesses are going to apprenticeships. Now, to address Mr. Camardi real quick, Mr. Chairman, there's seven, uh, there's seven, right here in North Carolina, we have the Department of Labor and the Apprenticeship Council over the years can, can put incentives there. I'll give you an example. Back in the 80s, the, the Department of Labor and the Apprenticeship Program says, if you will hire an unemployed person for the first nine months, if you pay them, say, eight bucks an hour, we will reimburse you four. But we will do that for nine months. But the qualifications are that person has to be unemployed. So we did a lot of interviews and hired, and we were in a growing stage, we hired four people on this program. Well, guess what? Two of them went through the apprenticeship program Two of them became supervisors in our in my shop. One even resigned and started his own business. You see, the key is, is that, like Mr. Camardi says, there has to be an opportunity for people to get in. And these opportunities, Mr. Camardi, is what brings in people that would not ordinarily have access possibly to an apprenticeship program. So just some of those things that help us. Uh, I have two quick. No, no, I nothing else about apprenticeship. Uh, uh, we can talk about that all. No, no, no. Uh, the same meeting Mr. Mill was at the transportation meeting. I asked Mr. Fred, uh, and I mentioned this earlier to someone. He he's uh, talking about his potential assistant somewhere down the road. Uh, he's he's going. He said, and I thought when I saw him the other day, he was going to talk about it. But he's going to come back before this board. He and so. He said to me and talk about that entire issue and he's going to put himself on the agenda Mr. Woodson. One thing about street repairs and you brought up Lane Tree. Chip, since you're here and, and Mr. Wood, if I, if I have a memory that's anywhere near correct, isn't, isn't there several uh, neighborhoods already in the pipeline? Because I had one that was down south. Tell me about it. about five petitions that have been submitted and what we've done is there's no, we discussed it with y'all, there's no reason to go through and determine if they're valid or not at this point. What we've done is, the policy is, is we take them in the order they come in. And so, in essence, it's frozen until the two year term runs. And at that point, what I envision is, is then you go back and you take them in order. And if Lane, and Lane Tree is at the top of that list, and then you would say, okay, we're going to give you 30 to 45 days, whatever this this <coughs> period is. You need to make sure you've got everything there. Make sure you meet. Remember, there's two 75% thresholds, so they have to meet both those thresholds before they can be considered. Now, 
at that point, if they don't meet that, then basically the petition is ruled invalid. You go to the second vote, and then you would go through the same process there. So that's the only fair way I know to do it, unless y'all think of a, of a different way to do it. But there's no reason to do it now, because, and the reason I'm saying that is, if you recall, as time goes by, if you're not prepared to act on it now, when you just look at Canterbury, we had sales of property, mm -hmm. we had divorces, uh, you know, which splits mm -hmm. the ownership, we, we had uh, people move away, we had people change their minds, some wanted to add their name, some people wanted to delete their name. So I think there has to be a finality, uh, but you really can't do that finality till you're ready to uh, move forward and fund it or not. And so that's kind of why we made the decision that we would not um, validate those petitions at this point because you're not ready to move forward. With it. But the original list is still the list. Yes. All right. Uh, and and uh, Marsha had all of that. She's turned it over to Carol. But I've not had Carol and Chip do and. and um, Alan Monk and I've not had them go through and try to validate anything because I'm it would, it I'm would be meaningless because I'm we saying. might be another 18 months. Could, could I make a comment on that? Yes, sir. We froze it because we had estimates in, ex, ex, in excess of $2.5 right. This new bid that came in actually dropped that to one8 so we would actually have about 700000 left in that first allotment. And right. if any of these projects would be in that threshold, then we should probably go ahead on those particular well, You might want to look at that. I still would If there's a smaller right, subdivision. I still would recommend so. let's finish this one because, okay. you know, the thing about these is this is a renovation project, you know, and they've gone through and made a good faith effort at estimating it, but until you start, you know, if, if they may say we think there's 50 feet of bad uh, roadbed here that could turn into 62 feet and so what I'm saying is I would finish one All right. let's, let's see start. where we're at and then if it comes back and we are a half minute short you make a good point and that is lane tree is roughly uh, in terms of the uh, lots now I haven't gotten the chip to determine the road the length of the road and that's really what we need to go by but if this was 1.8 million and that one's two, two and a half to three times its size, yeah. we're not looking at a 2.5 million dollar project. However, we some of the others are very small subdivisions, mm -hmm. and it, we might can knock them out for a quarter of a million dollars or something like well, that. Well, when we get through with this project, then then, we'll then I think what I would recommend at that point, then let's revisit it. Sure. Okay. Because. You agreed to take them in order, but at the same time, if, you, if you're not ready yeah. to go with the big one, you could go Very quickly, please. Maybe not yeah. the small one. Yeah. Because we should have to make a close decision, guys. I'm, that's yeah. right. Could, could, we, could we have an opportunity for Lane Tree, if they can get their 75%, to modify the funding? Because we're going to have to come up with enough funding for Lane Tree, is going to be up there. It's going to be. Uh, well, I, two or three times, and what I'm saying is to back the funding off and get Lane Tree out of the way, then but deal with the smaller subdivision in the order that they can. Well, that's up, that's up to y'all. Any yeah. of you can put something on the agenda. Yeah. I, I would just remind you, we did, we discussed that. Yeah, and but we haven't decided. <coughs> no, but the, it, it, we, when, it, we, when you did the retreat, we discussed all of that, and yeah. there was not support for doing that. Right. So we're going to, even though Lane Tree is in the priority list, we just because they're a larger subdivision, we're going to skip over them and not modify the no, funding. No, what, just, just for this no, no, what the discussion was at that point was your policy was to do projects up to 2.5 million understand. every two years. Right. And the consensus of the board at your retreat was we're not changing that policy at this time. Now that that's my recollection. At this time, that was before Lane Tree came on board. No, that was you did the retreat in January. Yeah, this year. Last so retreat. You discussed all this six months ago. 
Okay, well, I'm just saying that I'm, I'm, I am going to be in favor of getting the larger subdivisions out of the way first because of the priority list. That's all. Okay. Just for the record. Whatever the, whatever the board wants to do is fine. Just, just for the record, I'm in favor of following that policy just as you explained it. So that if a subdivision, regardless of what size it is, if they don't have a criteria and a small subdivision does, then the one is ready. And that might fall inside that $700,000 that you was talking about. Can't, you know, like, well, I appreciate what you're saying, Mr. Mayor, but let's follow that strict thing that we agreed on with that list. And whomever's ready, I, I, they become ready. I think what y'all came around to was let's finish this project. Mm -hmm. Let's see what it costs. Let's go through the entire process. Because remember, after we finish, after we finish the project, then you got to go through the actual uh, public hearing and everything, and actually assess, formally assess the um, the levy. And then we'll, and and that's kind of the close out of the project, with one exception, and that is we got to get it over to the DOT. Yeah. But with that, then I think we could look at uh, Joe. What you're talking about is, do we want to take discuss more, uh, in next in line? Is it small enough right. that you got the money already? Right. Uh, to do that and maybe one other because I'm some of these are very small, yep. you know, 30 40 lots, right? Mr. Chairman, do you need a motion to go back and close session? I need to let uh, <laughs> Mr. Gurley <laughs> stay in the Well, <laughs> to get back on track here with comments from the Board of Commissioners, <laughs> I would like to mention and a congratulations to Dennis Hill, the Editor at Gulfsburg News Argus. This is his official first day of uh, retirement. Dennis was a good friend of Wayne County. He was a great editor and a great reporter as well. And it was always seemed to be fair and unbiased. And I wish him uh, happiness. He was a pleasure to work with. And also, we all received an email yesterday from Geraldine Lee about August's uh, Agent Orange Awareness Week. And um, I like to express my many thanks to all the veterans. For their service and my special thoughts today to the Vietnam veterans they're the ones that were so impacted by the Agent Orange so my many thanks to those guys just for information purpose I'm a recipient of Agent Orange while I was in Vietnam thank you John and thank you Mr. Gurley for, for bringing that up it, it took me about two hours to find a tie that had some orange in it uh, after I got that bump from me Carolyn thank you very much folks Reminding us of things like that because well, this that, is the only I can't take credit. Head. That would be Gerald. <laughs> just who did it? Geraldine. Oh yeah, okay. Well, give her I, credit. Along then, but uh, I appreciate it. I appreciate it as well. But I yeah. don't own anything that's orange. I don't. <laughs> just <laughs> uh, very quickly for me, um, we're in you know, some serious negotiations at the hospital board. Uh, we did sign the contract to remove Wayne Health physicians, and they've gone from the UNC Health physicians now. And I'll, take, I'll ask that question that you want to ask. But the next step is we're very close to discussing moving on to the backbone of the infrastructure of UNC's IT system. It's not necessarily theirs, it's one that they bought. It's much larger than just the IT system. It affects all parts of medicine. It, it really does, and we don't have enough time today to go into all that. But that decision is, is pending and very close and should be taking place in the very near future. And of course, Steve, I know you will be there. But, uh, that's what I want to share. Tourism, we've already talked enough about today. And if you want to make that less, you go in closed session. I'm yeah. going to entertain. Yeah. Move. Move. <laughs> What's the reason? The same reason you plan on business. Okay, so I want to make sure we said that. All this in favor of going closed session, please move. Uh, all right. All right.